You're listening to Praying with Power and Purpose with Zari Banks. Shalom, 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 loved ones. This is Z from 1123 Ministries, where we level up everyone we serve spiritually and financially. Welcome to another episode of Praying with Power and Purpose. It is Thursday, well, day late, September 12th, 2024. Y'all, I just didn't get myself together and get the podcast recorded yesterday. So I am recording it today. Lord Jesus, I'm giving you all praise, honor, and glory. You are the God of all flesh and nothing is too hard for you. You are a miracle worker. I give you praise, honor, and glory. Thank you, Lord, that we are able to do what you did and greater because you have gone to be with the Father and left the Rock of Kadesh here with us so that we can be manifestors and demonstrators of the power of Yahweh Elohim in this earth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are faithful. I bless you. I honor you. And I'm so blessed uh, to be in covenant relationship with you through Yeshua, your son. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, Today is going to be kind of like a little potpourri thing, but the main topic is fighting the enemy. Um, I heard, listen, y'all, I hear believers, we say all kind of crazy stuff all the time and it needs to stop. You know, I've really trained myself over the years to just, you know, listen for the Lord's voice and just say that. And it's not always nice. I'm going to admit that it's not always nice as far as people are concerned. But in my mind, when I'm having a conversation with the Lord and I just say what the Lord says, I'm not thinking about offending somebody, hurting somebody or anything like that. I'm thinking I'm delivering the word of the Lord. Ooh, this person loves the Lord. They're going to be ready to receive this word. But that's not always the case. Sometimes people get upset when I'm hearing something and I just say it. And you have to understand the life of a seer is uh, different than everybody else's life. And the life of a prophet is different than everybody else's life as well. You know, um, the thing about being a prophet is you have to understand like people had fear of them in Bible days and ancient days because, you know, of the way that they could see and all of that stuff. And because often when they were delivering the word of the Lord, it was an instruction that was going to be difficult to follow. Like, you're going into battle, you know, get yourself together and go fight now. Or like what Isaiah told Hezekiah, get your house in order. You're about to die. You know, like every word that the Lord delivers is not going to be one that's going to be comfortable to everybody. And listen, um, Johnny Enlow was talking about this a couple of weeks ago on the Elijah list on his show, Johnny Unfiltered, that if you're a prophet and everybody loves you and everybody loves every word that you've put out, you know, I'm talking about majorities here, like 95%. And just like Jesus said, if the majority of the world is your friend, then you're not generally not going to be a friend of the Lord. That's not how it works, you know, because prophets get things from the Lord. And, you know, the truth of the matter is just that everybody doesn't like that stuff. You know, everything that the Lord has to say, I don't like everything that the Lord has to say, you know, and you just have to work it out and, and come to, come to peace with it. And listen, the Bible literally tells us, it literally tells, it amazes me that some people trip about some things that are right there in the word that they claim is the end all be all to their life. It says in Hebrews 4.12 that the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. Do you understand that? Dividing between soul and marrow, soul and spirit, bone and marrow. So what the word of God is doing is on one side, it is cutting off the stuff that does not line up with the Lord. And it's also splitting between You know, are you receiving this in the spirit? Are you doing this in the flesh? Which one of these things it is? And sometimes you have to understand when people get mad, when you deliver the word of the Lord, it's because their flesh does not want to submit to that word. You got to know this type of stuff, right? So every word that that you get from the Lord is not nice. Listen, I've had my son's been prophesying to me since he was like three years old. And, you know, the word that he gave me, like one of those words that if you don't get this together, your life is about to fall apart. And I didn't heed that word that he gave me. And my life fell apart six months later. You know, within six months, I had lost everything. And I received a warning from my child. He was only eight years old at the time. And listen, it's about about to be nine, you know, a few months later. And uh, sometimes people don't want to hear the word from their child or from somebody that's younger than them or even from their own minister. Sometimes people just don't want to hear the word. And so they're not going to receive it. Well, well, when you don't, when the Lord's given an instruction and you don't heed it, you're setting yourself up for a tragedy. I've lived this. I have lived this. Right. So when I get a word from the Lord, I'm going to give it to you. You may not like it, but I'm going to give it to you. And and you got to understand I'm hearing the Lord. I'm really not sitting here contemplating, oh, are they going to be able to receive this? Literally in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, the Lord says something, repeat it. And then also I'm thinking that, oh, this person loves the Lord. They, they want to hear everything that the Lord has to say, good and bad, right? 
not when it's at your own doorstep sometimes. People people don't mind the uh, correction and, and all that stuff from the Lord if as long as it's not hitting their household. But it's not always going to be like that. Sometimes the Lord is going to correct you. And in this stage where um, the Lord is increasing 1123 ministries, literally he and my apostle told me the same thing um, when we were at uh, Kenneth Copeland's Southwest Believers this year. You know, I always, you know, I'm there just soaking up that faith environment and then also hearing instructions from the Lord about how to move forward. And the Lord and then my apostle confirmed it and were both telling me, you are, you know, you're trying to be everybody's friends. You're trying to be casual, trying to say, oh, I'm not anybody's boss or anything like that. And they're like, this is your ministry that the Lord has given you. You can't just go out like that. You've got to start to help people understand that you're the king over this commission and they need to respond to you as such. They need to understand that, blah, 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 all this stuff. And since I've started moving into that position of, you know, this just isn't a, a willy nilly fly by night type of operation. You know, we're about to start heading forward. People don't like that business, Zari, very often, is it very much. I have realized they don't like that chick. But it doesn't matter. The Lord told me to get it together and start acting like I'm the boss of a corporation and, you know, go forward that way. And I'm like, OK, and I have no choice but to do what he said, because if he pulls this away from me, then what am I supposed to do? You know, I've invested my life in this ministry for the last few years, but also even before I went into this ministry. So, I mean, I got to stick with it. Otherwise, I have to go back into the world and I don't work well in the world. Right. I just I don't. I don't, I see too much. I know too much. I, I just, and I'm going to say it, you know, and you know, the world doesn't like that. They want everybody politically correct. Anywho, that's kind of not even what I had meant to talk about. But uh, one thing I do want to share with you is last night I was praying and thank you, Holy Spirit, because my son was fasting, you know, the other day, 10 PM to 10 PM. And then when he was done fasting, I was fixing him dinner and, um, I was just thanking Holy Spirit. I'm like, thank you so much that, you know, I've got a 20 something who fasts and prays when he needs to hear the word of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit said to me, um, he thinks he's praying for an answer for right now, you know, or in the near future. But what he's actually doing is preparing for the manifestation of the mantle he carries. And I was like, wow, Lord, that is awesome. But it was also encouraging and also exciting and you know, it's just good. You know, when the Lord has shown you, you know, so much stuff about your kids and all this stuff and you just, you know, you don't put any pressure on them to do it. You just pray it in, speaking it, pray it in, speaking it and all this stuff and guiding them, leading them, giving them wisdom as they need it and stuff like that. And you see the manifestation of the Lord's hand in their life day by day by day as they've grown up. It is, there's nothing better than that. Let me tell you, there is nothing better than that. And he, and praise the Lord, you know, a lot of times people don't think about it, but I'm thinking of, you know, leaving a spiritual legacy on the earth and I'm in the right vein to have that happen, to leave an excellent spiritual legacy on the earth, you know, going down to the next generation. So I just thank the Lord for that opportunity, that reality, that truth. And I just give him all praise, honor and glory because, you know, it, it was not possible other than the Lord. But with the Lord, what's happening with him and in his life right now is absolutely possible and to be expected. Right. And that's your responsibility to, you know, train up your children in the way they should go. So when they're old, they don't depart from it. You know, if I was able to do it and he didn't even live with me, you know, his, the entirety of his childhood, he was away from me for a couple of years. So, you know, I mean, he went from being, you know, fully in the, in the, you know, constantly just church, church, church in the Lord and all that stuff to, you know, straight up heathenism. And he still came out great. So it's possible for everybody and anyone who wants that for their children. And you got to contend for that stuff. You have to contend for that stuff. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Fighting the enemy. So believer, I had a believer the other day, you know, saying fighting the enemy. And I'm like, what? There's nothing in the Bible that tells you to fight the enemy except for like a natural warfare and stuff like that. You don't fight enemies. You you don't fight enemies. There is a scripture that says, right, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and all this stuff. It's, you know, uh, things in the, in the spirit. Right. But the thing is, is that you don't even do that type of wrestling. That's the old church model. You know, the old church model was like, you got to go toe to toe with the devil and you got to be careful. If you do this, they'll retaliate and knock you out and all that stuff. That's old school church 
That is old school church. We are now in the kingdom. That's not how anything is done in the kingdom. You don't fight the enemy in the kingdom. Jesus never fought the enemy with anything other than the word. So if he's your perfect example, which he is, yes, Rabbi Shaul, um, Sermon Kepha, Yohanan, everybody else who wrote different portions of the Bible, all of that stuff is good information. But you always want to go back to Jesus first. And Jesus didn't go fisticuffs with the enemy. Jesus spoke the word. And that's what shut the enemy down three times. It is written. It is written. It is written. That's where you're supposed to be coming from when you have to do anything with the enemy. And the Lord has already told us you start out binding the enemy, removing them from anything that you're doing. You remove them from your house, remove them from your career, your business, your job, your ministry, um, remove them from a project that you're working on. Any of that stuff, you bind them up and loose what it is that you want. And then you go forward that way. You don't fight the enemy. That's not what you're equipped to do. That's what angels are for. They are fully equipped. There are uh, hosts of heaven, right? Hosts of heaven that literally are warriors, their army that fight the enemy. You don't fight the enemy. You don't have any skill in going fisticuffs with, you know, the demonic. They've been around too long. They're ancient enemies. They know you know, most moves that, that, uh, people are going to try to make. That's why you have to get into the spirit and do everything that way. If you're living spirit first, you have common sense to know why would I fight the enemy when Psalm 91 says that all I have to do is remain under the shadow of the almighty, right? And be in his wings, stay in his presence, all of that stuff. You don't fight, uh, enemies yourself. You delegate that to, um, the hosts of heaven, because you have authority. They're ministering spirits sent to minister to you because you're an heir to salvation. So you go back and look at Jesus. What did he do? It is written. It is written. It is written. So when you're needing to deal with the enemy, you're going to handle them with the word. When you speak the word, angels move. That's Psalm 103 verse 20, or is it 104 verse 20? I always get the 103 and the 104 and all that stuff mixed up, but it's verse 20. It says, you mighty ones doing his bidding, hearkening to the voice of the Lord. So when the word of the Lord is spoken out of your mouth, the angels who are assigned to whatever you're decreeing, they go and perform those tasks. And then you walk in victory and from victory because you're in Christ, hidden in Christ. Ephesians 2, 6, right? You're hidden in Christ. And then Colossians says you're seated with Christ in, or Ephesians 6, 2, 6 says you're seated with Christ. Ephesians, uh, Colossians 3, 3, I believe says that you are hidden in Christ. So by your position, this is you living spiritual spirit first, not soul first, not body first. You're not, you're not, you know, just uh, tethered down here to this, this physical realm because this physical realm is whack, is fake. It's uh, subject to all kind of change and very fickle and is just not real at all. The spiritual realm is the bigger realm. And that's where you have to do everything back in 2016. And before that, I used to teach a course called building in the spirit. You know why? Because if you, if you can't construct it in the spirit, it will never exist in the natural. That's the way God set this up. He demonstrated that in Genesis 1, 1. He demonstrated that is before he spoke out of his mouth, light be. And, and if you go look at original language, he sang it out. He didn't just speak it. If you go back and look at original language and study that out before he said it, you learned he had imagined all of this stuff in his mind before he said one word. Before he said one word, before he released any frequency, any uh, sound out of his mouth, he had already thought up everything that he wanted to create. He knew exactly what light was going to be, what it was going to look like before he said light be. Well, how did that happen? Because he built it in the spirit first. He saw it in his sanctified and holy imagination, and then he spoke it out for manifestation. I'm going to play a quick ad for you and be right back after this. It's time to register for Supernatural U 5785, Saturday, October 19th, 2024, in Faith Valley, Tucson, Arizona. Come receive the word of the Lord for the year Pei Hey, the year of Ruach's breath. This year, three seers will teach you to live with Holy Spirit's voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Register now at www.1123.life. 
Welcome back, loved ones. We are talking about fighting the enemy, which is a misconception that many believers hold, I'm afraid. We are not supposed to be fighting the enemy, loved ones. We have authority over the enemy, and uh, it will actually cause us more problems than it should if we fight the enemy instead of doing things according to what the word tells us to do. So I was sharing before Psalm 10320, and it is 10320. I had to pull it up here on Bible Gateway. Bless Adonai, you angels of his mighty and strength, performing his word upon hearing the utterance of his word. Okay, so this is what it says, bless you, you, the angels of his, right? Those are the angels. And then it says mighty and strength, performing his word. So when you speak the word, then they move and go do what that word tells it to do. Why? Because that's what they're trained to do. That's what they're created for. Hebrews eleven fourteen, excuse me, Hebrews one fourteen tells us that they are all ministering spirits sent to minister to us because we are heirs to salvation. And we're supposed to do and say what we hear the father saying. We learned that from Jesus. I only do what I see my father doing, right? That's, he's our perfect example. We're supposed to live life the way he lived life. And he spoke and did what his father did. And so we're supposed to do likewise so that when we speak the father's word, then we know that the angels are automatically going to do what needs to be done. And I live my life this way. I see this all the time when I started learning about angels a long time ago and started seeing angels and working with angels and all of that stuff. Um, what This was one of those things that the Lord opened up for me very easily to help me. In partnering with him, you know, if you're trying to speak things that aren't necessarily the God word, God's word, they might be God's word. They sound good or something like that sound, you know, ultra religious or anything like that, but aren't exactly what the Lord would instruct an angel to do. Then you're not going to have their service. You got to be speaking the word of God. And I've all shared with the, I've shared with all of you, you know, multiple times about when I met my number one everyday angel, Ron Ronald, when he showed up to me in 2017 in the prophet's room in federal way, Washington. And, you know, I was fussing at the Lord about something. I was supposed to be praying. Right. And, but I was really fussing at the Lord about something. And why is this? And how come this is working? Da, 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 all this stuff. And then Ron Ronald showed up and, um, it was the first time that I had seen him in that way. You know, he came in, he's a warrior angel. He's very no nonsense had on his armor. And he says, uh, you know, you need to grow up. You break down and cry every time something looks like it's not going right. He said, you do well, you're speaking the word, you're praying, you're believing. And then one little thing happens that looks like it's not going to work out right. And you just break down, you start crying and whining. You stop speaking right words. You know, you stop focusing on the Lord and all that stuff. And then you're worried about things that don't happen. And listen, now that I'm thinking about it right now, that has been my downfall. That had been my downfall for a long time, because that's the exact same word that my son gave me that I was telling you about at the beginning of the podcast um, back in the fall of 2010. You know, I was waking him up one morning from school and he sat up and he said, um, the Lord said, if you like, this is the first thing out of his mouth. He's like literally just, you know, sat up in the bed and looked at me and said, the Lord said, if you don't stop worrying about what you don't have, you're going to lose even more. And I did, I didn't heed that word. And then six months later, I had lost custody of him and I was foreclosed and living in my car. So, uh, you know, I was saying that at the beginning, sometimes you don't like the word of the Lord that's being delivered to you, but you better heed it. Cause if you don't, you're setting yourself up for a tragedy. And, uh, most of the time when you don't heed a word like that from the Lord, you're not mature enough to go back and repent so that you don't end up in the tragedy. You're just going to end up in the tra tragedy. You know, like at that time I wasn't mature enough to repent right then and say, Oh Lord, I'm so sorry, you know, to turn it around and, uh, you know, get myself in the right track. I was just like, whatever, you know, and cause I was, I, you know, I just, I wasn't mature enough to receive that word, even though he had prophesied to me, you know, two times before in his life, I still didn't heed that word. And, uh, you know, that happens, that happens to people all the time. Matter of fact, I gave a word to somebody just last month and they, man, they got mad. You know, it was one of those same kind of words, you know, you're displeasing the Lord. If you don't stop, then, you know, death is knocking at your doorstep. And of course that pissed him off because nobody wants to hear that. But if you go back and look at Hezekiah, remember the Lord sent Isaiah in there and said, you know, get your house in order. You're about to die. What did he do? He got down on his knees and prayed to the Lord. Well, he turned his face to the walls, what it says, but he humbled himself before the Lord and repented and called out to the Lord for deliverance and for salvation. And it was granted to him an additional 15 years. So sometimes you get a tough word. Do what you got to do so that you don't end up in tragedy. Take it from me, personal experience. I ended up in tragedy. Six months, y'all. Six months later, 
I was completely destitute after not heeding that word from the Lord. That also goes to show you how important thanksgiving is as far as the Lord is concerned. Give thanks in all things. This is a will of God in Christ for you. That's what the written word of God says, saints. So that should be a priority in our lives. And listen, I have um, started taking that scripture so seriously in this season because um one of the things that has happened recently uh, during, you know, we were all praying together, or worshiping together or something, and the Lord just started laying out, you know, much of the next couple of years for me and showing me all these wonderful things. And I'm like, man, Lord, this seems too good to be true. And he was like, well, it's not too good to be true. All you have to do is, you, you know, you move forward in Thanksgiving, get your words aligned with what I've shown you, and it's going to be done, you know, stuff like that. So Thanksgiving is extremely important. If you're worried about what you don't have, you're, you're never going to have enough. You will never have enough. And not only that, you know, if the Lord sends a word, you know, about you having to get it together, then you better get it together. And Thanksgiving is an important part of getting it together. Right. So you want to be remaining thankful so that you don't lose anything that you do have, but also so that you can come into greater. Right. Give thanks in all things for that is the will of Christ Jesus in you. I don't even know what number that is, but I know that scripture. I've been realizing that more and more that as I've been, you know, I've been dependent on the word of God for a long time. But like as I'm like heavily dependent on it in every situation, I'm starting to realize I know a whole lot of word and I don't always have addresses, you know. And I, I was thinking, you know, is that really a big deal? And kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I know some people probably are not happy that I may know the word and don't know the addresses, but you know what? I know Jesus and that's what's most important. Cause even if I never looked at a Bible, I know him. I know how to get to him. I know how to ask him questions. I know how to receive from him. I know how to get wisdom and a whole lot of other stuff. All right, loved ones. So back to this finding the enemy nonsense. So Jesus demonstrated to us when he was being tempted by the enemy and the enemy said, you know, I can do all these things for you. And three times he gave him the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. So that is how you fight the enemy. And it's technically not even you fighting the enemy. It's you taking authority over the enemy because the word of God is supposedly the final authority in your life, right? As a believer. So if you wield that word of God, just like Jesus did, you are stepping into his authority, stepping into who he is and you're taking authority over the demonic. Speaking of taking authority over the demonic, why would you waste time fighting somebody that you have authority and dominion over? That's what you need to learn how to do is take dominion over the enemy, right? The, Colossians tells us that the Lord Jesus spoiled them. That means that they were um, ruined to the point that they could never recover. The only reason the enemy has power to do anything is because people give them that power. So if the enemy is wreaking havoc in your life, you've allowed it. You've opened the door and let them in sometimes or somehow. Yes, they do breach sometimes. You know, they, they, they are thieves and all of that stuff. And they're constantly looking for a way to steal, kill and destroy. But if you are alert and on your guard, the way Paul told you, or I'm sorry, Peter told you to be in the Bible, because you know, it's walking around like a devouring lion looking for who it can mess up, then you're going to have less all kinds of issues because they're not going to be able to get through to you right if you get in the habit of following the written words uh methods of of taking care of the enemy knocking their feet out from under them before they even get planted somewhere then everything's gonna be easier for you so this is the first thing you do you stay under the shadow of the almighty that's psalm 91 right he already said he's going to take care of you and nothing's going to come near your dwelling if you remain in him in his presence so, you know, those people who think that work is more important, you know, that eight hours of work a day is more important than spending, you know, two, three hours with the Lord every day, you're going to end up in some mess at some point and wondering how you got there, right? You got to make God a priority if you want him to be able to deliver you out of anything and keep you from, you know, unnecessary stuff. You got to make him a priority, right? Any step you make toward the Lord, you know, he's going to bring you back an increase. So that's what I'm saying. You may go to work for eight hours. You can give the Lord three hours and he can, you know, set up your life more in those three hours than you could get done, you know, eight hours trying to live life on your own and without his input, without his help, without his attention. Right. So just 
do your best to make the Lord a priority. Matter of fact, this Sunday, I'm going to do a social media fast and I would Im- like to invite you to do that with me. So just stay off of social media. That even includes Christian Mingle if you're on that type of stuff. No social media. Just do it for eight hours. Don't get on. If you can make it the whole day, that's even better. But you're going to have peace in your life that you don't normally have. I'll guarantee it. Plus, it'll be a lot easier for you to hear the Lord without any tainting or outside influence. It'll be a good time. And watch, I can guarantee you, you're going to like it so much. You're going to be like, man, do I even need to go back on social media? And the answer might be no. You never know. All right. So back to fighting the enemy, right? So the first thing you're supposed to do is remain under the shadow of the almighty under his wings, right? Psalm 91. That's you stay so close to God that if he stopped moving, you'd run smack dab into his back. That's how close with the Lord you're supposed to be. And then Psalm 103 20 tells us, bless Adonai, you angels, mighty in strength, performing his word upon hearing the utterance of his word. All right. So they move when they hear something that the Lord said already or something that he would say in a way that he would say it, right? The next thing is you war with the word. It is written, it is written, it is written. That's what Yeshua told Satan every time he offered him something, every time he tried to bribe him, he came back and hit him with the word of God. Why? Because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's alive and active and it'll slice and dice, right? You come back with the word. You're not going toe to toe with any demon. You're not equipped for that. You don't have the strength for it. You don't have the know-how for it. If you try to go uh, fisticuffs with the enemy, it's going to take you a lot longer to win a battle than anybody else because you're going to get tired a lot more than they are. Because if you are, you know, using that old school church model where you're trying to do a battle in any of your strength or performance you're going to tire yourself out way faster than they will you're going to tire yourself out way faster than they will you have to go at it the way jesus went at it with the word wield the word and all the weapons of the warfare and listen there are thousands probably uh specific weapons listed in the word of god i should do some teachings on those so many weapons there's like the whirlwind of God, the fire of God, the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, um, the sword of the Lord. There uh, is like the um, the tempest of the Lord. So much, so many different weapons that the Lord has available just in the written word. You got to read it. The hand of the Lord, the favor of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. So many things are weapon, praising the Lord. So many weapons listed in the written word, right? So stick to the word and you don't have to uh, deal with you know, trying to land blows on them and them landing blows on you because you don't have a spiritual protection or spiritual maturity enough to know that you don't fight them, that you send angels to go and fight them. So the next thing is you've got the word, you've got angels, you've got a Jesus's example. Then you also have binding and loosing, right? You have binding and loosing. Jesus said that I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom and nothing. And he said that the gates of hell will not prevail against it right? It will not prevail against a a, a mature church, a church that actually knows what's going on, right? So in Matthew 16, 16 through 19, it reads, Shimon Kepha answered, you are the Mashiach, the son of the living God. Yeshua said to him, blessed are you, Shimon, son of, um, what does it say? Shimon ben, ben Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also tell you that you are Kepha and upon this rock, I will build my community and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth. Do you hear that? Whatever you forbid, this is lingo language, le, le, excuse me, legal language, y'all. This is legal language. Whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven and what you permit on earth will be permitted will have been permitted in heaven. Excuse my uh, misspeaking. Y'all about to take a quick break and I'll be right back with you. It was in the fall of 2017. I was in my prophet's room in Federal Way, Washington, and I was praying in the spirit. And even though I was praying in the spirit with my mouth and my spirit, my mind was kind of fussing at the Lord and worrying about something not working out the way I wanted to. And then this angel flies in, stands there on my left side. And he says to me, you need to grow up. 
you break down and cry every time something seems like it's not working out for you. You stop moving forward in faith, stop speaking the right words, and then I can't help you. I just have to stop and wait until you go back to faith. And he was saying, stop doing that. You know, move forward in faith all the time. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm working on your behalf. I want to help you accomplish these things that you're praying for and these things that the Lord wants for you. But you're going to have to mature and stop breaking down and tying my hands. That changed things. This is Z from 1123 Ministries, where we level up everyone we serve spiritually and financially. Visit us at 1123.life. Welcome back, loved ones. We are talking about fighting the enemy and the proper way to fight the enemy in this kingdom age that we're in. And kingdom age, if you're not sure what that means, go to 1123 Ministries uh, website, which is 1123.life, or go to our app or the Roku channel, all 1123 Ministries. And look up the two episodes of Revelation Station that I did on the Kingdom Age. There's a part one and a part two. And the Kingdom Age is a lot different than uh, Church Age. You know, Church Age, sometimes a lot of crying and whining and um, stuff like that was involved in getting close with the Lord and getting the Lord to do things. And things are a little bit different now. In the Kingdom Age, we literally live exactly the way Jesus did. And we're in this uh, portion of history that's called the restoration of all things, or we're moving toward that, the restoration of all things. So it's a time where, you know, there's a scripture that says the all of creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. So what we're doing is we're moving toward a time where we can answer that groan, where we have solutions, where, you know, you go into a city like, or even a state, well, city, I guess, like Detroit, Michigan, where uh, everything is just falling apart, you know, all the, the property values have just dwindled and you know, people don't want to stay there. They don't want to live there. Lots of crime, all that stuff. You go in there, you release the word of the Lord, you loose the hosts of heaven and the weapons of Yahweh's arsenal. And then things get turned around and they get turned around super fast, you know, without a lot of time and everything. And so that's what we're moving into the ability to be able to, um, answer the groaning of creation. And listen, I've been contending for that. Um, that's one of the things that I've been praying for since the Lord, uh, opened up the power of God anointing to me, you know, that led into pursuing miracle signs and wonders following me every day. And since I've set my attention on those things, like Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on things below, that has been happening. So it's true like that in anything in life, whatever you, um, you know, put your attention on, that's what's going to manifest in your life. So when I went from power and authority to dominion, to miracle signs and wonders. And now I'm moving toward um, doing the greater works than what Jesus did. So that's what I've been contending for. And that's how the Lord is taking me through in this prayer season and stuff like that. So there, there is going to be a remnant of people on the earth who do greater works than Jesus did. You know, sometimes people say things like flying in airplanes is greater works than Jesus did and stuff like that. Well, yeah, in a way it is, but that's not as supernatural as some of the things that we need to have take place in this earth. I'm talking about like resurrection from the dead, you know, being a regular thing as opposed to, you know, one person here and there has raised somebody to, from the dead. You know, some ministries have like three people raised from the dead. I'm talking about that's going to be a regular occurrence. That's what the restoration of all things season is about. And that's where um, we're headed in this kingdom age. That's what you should be expecting. That's what everybody you're, um, learning from should be teaching is the season of the restoration of all things. If they're highly and heavily focused on the end times, that's what your life is going to be. But in this ministry, we just, we don't really have our own personal agendas. We just kind of seek the Lord to see what he wants us to do. And then we go that direction. And there are lots of ministries that do that. They ask the Lord, what, what do you want me to do? And then they go and do that. But the thing is that you have to understand uh, we have different knowledge, different revelation than some of the older ministries do, even some of the, the current ministries do, simply because we're seeking after different things, right? You know, um, the Lord told me that, I think I shared that on the podcast last time, like I was asking about, I was like, somebody's been following me, you know, for a couple of years, and they still don't have their prayer language. So, you know, what is going on with that? And the Lord was saying, well, um, you know, they're afraid of the deep things of God, like some of the stuff that you talk about, they're just like, oh, you know, that's too much. I just, I can't, I can't get involved in that stuff. Well, the Lord doesn't push that stuff on you. So if you have this specific, um, you know, 
mindset about the Godhead, how they operate, what they do, what they don't do, and you're not willing to step out of that to receive more, then he's not going to force you out of that because he wants the relationship with you. And he will allow you to limit your relationship and your revelation and your understanding of the Godhead with them. You know, the, the relation, your relationship with them as much as you want to, they're not going to force you to learn about bigger things and more things. You have to be open to that type of stuff. Right. And, uh, so let's get back to fighting the enemy so that I don't get off track here in these last couple of minutes. Okay, so we were reading Matthew 16, 16 through 19. Shimon Kepha answered, you are the Mashiach, the son of the living God. Yeshua said to him, blessed are you, Shimon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also tell you that you are Kepha, and upon this rock I will build my community, and the gates of Sheol will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. So remember in Psalms it says, the Lord owns the heavens, but he has given authority of the earth to men. So we have authority here. So whatever we decide is legal and able to function in this earth, it will function that way. And it will also be permitted in heaven. That's why we have to know what the Lord wants. And we bring that to earth, which is what we're supposed to do as believers. We're the ones who can bring what's in heaven down here to this realm. Nobody else can bring that here, even though the enemy would like to try and tell you that they're bringing heaven to earth. They're not. That's only available to people in covenant relationship. And listen, the, these keys of the kingdom, this key of the kingdom here, binding and loosing, it's a legal term. It's a legal term. So whatever you decide should happen on the earth, you speak that it happens. It's legal. If you, if you say it is not legal, then it will not be legal. You have that much authority on the earth. And then if we hop over to Luke ten nineteen it tells us, I've given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will by any means hurt you. You have to understand that you have all this authority on the earth. You, 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 as a believer in Jesus, have all this authority on the earth, and you need to start exercising it and start taking dominion. That's what you're supposed to do. So this is what you do. Let's say that you are... You know, you work outside of the home. You've always got issues going on in your work. So before you go to work, you get up, give Jesus some fantastic worship, and then you address the enemy and put them in their place because that's how you fight the enemy in the kingdom age. And as a believer, you have authority over them. So you shouldn't be going fisticuffs with them. You tell them where to go and how to do it, right? You have dominion over the enemy. And if you don't understand that, they're going to run you ragged in different realms of your life because you don't know who you are. There's nothing in the word that tells you that you're under the enemy's thumb. Jesus literally died on the cross, went down to hell, beat them up, slapped them around, took all their authority and gave it back to your butt. So why would you allow the enemy to run your life ragged? It doesn't make any sense. That's people who are ignorant of what. The Lord did for them. That's somebody who's, if you're somebody who doesn't know who you are in Christ and doesn't understand that you have dominion over the enemy, then you are one of those people who make the, uh, the sacrifice of Jesus. Uh, you make it in vain because you take things from the enemy that you don't have to take simply because you're not willing to enforce his victory in your life. You got to think about all that stuff. Right. Got to think about all that stuff. And listen, I haven't always uh, put the enemy in their place. But let me tell you right now, when I'm trying to build all this stuff that the Lord has placed in front of my eyes as a vision, I'm putting them in their place regularly every single day. Like I didn't used to always do this every single day, you know, putting them in their place. But now I do every single day. I go at them for a little bit. Right. You dumb demons. You better get your hands off of everything that belongs to me. Get off of my path. I'm, you know, moving forward for the kingdom. I'm reminding you that I'm hidden in Christ and by my position in him, because you're under his feet, you're also under my feet. He's given me authority to trample on you. So I'm trampling on you. And then I send angels out to beat them down, to subdue them, to arrest them and to plunder their storehouses. That's how you fight the enemy. And if you do it that way, watch, you're going to see how fast your life turns around. And that's what I recommend you do. So again, you fight them with the word and you fight them in the spirit. You don't fight them, you know, like wearing yourself out doing anything with the enemy. 
And you don't even necessarily have to yell. Sometimes you get, you know, in the moment or you get hyped up or whatever and you start yelling at them. You can do that, but you don't have to yell. The word of the Lord is... It goes forward. It has its own frequency, sound and vibration. It goes forward and it does what it's intended to do. That's Isaiah 55, remember? So as long as you're saying that word, angels are going to grab a sword as soon as it comes out of your mouth. And I don't know if you have had that vision, but I had that vision. The Lord showed me this a long time ago when he was teaching me about the importance of words and showing me, you know, he took me back in time and showed me were things that I had spoken before, why my life was the way it was. And that's one of the reasons I always say you have what you say, so call it how you want it. And that's why I always know if your life is a mess, you allowed it in there because of your own words. And you can't blame anybody else for that because I'm not the only one in the world who, you know, has screwed up their life by saying things that are wrong before it's impossible in a voice activated universe. When you frame your own world with your words, whatever is going on in your life, you spoke it. Or when somebody spoke it over you, you didn't fight it. You just accepted it. You came to agreement with it. You meditated on it and uh, you sure listened to the enemy a couple of time or two, right? That's just the way it is. So you fight the enemy by remaining in the spirit remaining in Jesus under the shadow of the almighty under his feathers so that nothing else can get to you. You bind and loose. You launch the word at them like crazy. You launch all the other weapons of warfare against them. And like I said, there are probably thousands, um, weapons of Yahweh listed in the word, but even those that aren't in the word, like I've been given a bazooka in my personal arsenal. I have a bazooka that was given to me in a dream one night. Um, there are lots of different other weapons in there. You know, like the other night I was using the, a flamethrower against the enemy. So it just depends. But you you get you ask the Lord for access to his arsenal. I don't know. I didn't do anything specific to get access to that. I was just praying in spirit one day and the Lord said, I'm giving you access to the arsenal of Yahweh. So now I have access to even more weapons than I had before. But um, you just launch all of those weapons at them, you know, depending on what it needs. One of my favorites, of course, is the lightning rod of righteous, righteousness to launch into certain situations that aren't just. And the Lord will go in there and turn those things over for you. But it doesn't take you uh, fist cuffing with the enemy. You do it all with the spoken word, with faith and with authority. Right. You, you have to take dominion over them and you have to remind them constantly. You don't have any power. I'm not giving you any power. I'm not giving you any agreement. So you can't operate in my life. I don't care who said what, you know, it doesn't matter. You will not have any authority in my life. I'm letting you know as the one who has the right to speak over my life and govern my own life, as well as the responsibility to govern my own life realms. You're not going to touch anything that belongs to me. And I want to steal some of your stuff back, even if you don't hurt me, because you've done it in the past, you know, and you just plunder them and just remind them. Like, listen, one of the things that terrifies the enemy is the blood of Jesus. So simple. Everybody knows about it. Everybody has access to it. That's something that you could be using every single day of your life, even if you had no knowledge of any other weapon of God's warfare that existed. You know about the blood of Jesus and you could be launching that at the enemy all the time. Mark Hankins calls it slinging blood everywhere, you know, cause he's Southern. He's like from Louisiana or something like that. So he's got a Southern accent. And, uh, so you have everything that you need to defeat an already defeated foe. That's another thing you need to remember. And, and I say that to them all the time. Do you, don't you remember that Jesus already melted your face off once? Do you really want, you know, even more damage done to your ugly self, right? And the thing that baffles me is that people talk crazy to people in the natural all the time. So why do you not let the enemy have it when they're trying to bring something to your doorstep? You know, if you're not willing to speak up and tell them to have a seat somewhere, then, you, I mean, you, it's, you, you do feel bad for people, but it's almost like you've been sitting up in church all this time and then you're still sitting up there letting the enemy slap you around and use you as your punching bag. Well, you know, when you get sick of it, you'll get sick of it and you'll tell them to stop. You know, I've, I've dealt that word to two people in our ministry, you know, at different times this year. They, it was like, you, you're sitting here letting the enemy beat you up for no reason. Are you not tired of that? It, same with another one, a single mom. You know, I'm like, are you, are you not, the enemy has been running you ragged. Are you not tired of them yet? 
Okay, so rise up in your spirit and put them in their place. Listen, her life has completely turned around since that time. Completely. All right, loved ones. Um, I'm going to wrap it up right here. Don't forget to check us out at www.11123.life. I invite you to partner with us if we bless you in any way. We do have a conference coming up here October 19th, 2024 here in Faith Valley, Arizona. Go to 1123.life to register and um, go ahead and share these things if you think that they will be a blessing to anyone. And you can always send prayer requests or submit testimonies over on our website. All right, loved ones, again, I bless you in Yeshua's name. And remember, you have what you say, so call it how you want it. It's time to register for Supernatural U 5785, Saturday, October 19th, 2024, in Faith Valley, Tucson, Arizona. Come receive the word of the Lord for the year Pay Hey, the year of Ruach's breath. This year, three seers will teach you to live with Holy Spirit's voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Register now at www.1123.life. Shalom, this is Z. If you've enjoyed this good word feast we just had, I encourage you to sow into Revelation or partner with us at www.1123.life forward slash give. When you covenant with us, you're entitled to every anointing, every activation, every mantle, and every blessing that we operate in multiplied because that's how the Lord does things. I bless you in Yeshua's name. Copyright 2024, Zari Banks Media and 1123 Ministries.